Be advised, mature content ahead. This podcast is brought to you ad-free thanks to the Legion of Demons at patreon.com slash N-O-T-L-P. If you like what you hear, there's much more at patreon.com slash N-O-T-L-P. Join the Legion. That's patreon.com slash N-O-T-L-P. And now the show. How do you do? Just a word of friendly warning. I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you do not care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now is your chance to, uh, well, we've warned you. You'll be doing a lot of watching monster movies with your friends, maybe online. Virtually. Virtually. Uh, this is Night of the Living Podcast. The Word week, up. <laughs> the week of March 15th. I am isolating at home, as is Kelly, as you can hear him on the phone. We're Hi, I, I am Andy. Uh, self-quarantine, baby. Yep. Andy's here, though. Andy this, is I'm not here. here. This is an android that oh. is uh, in my place. I let Andy it's an in. Android. An Andy An android. Um, but as soon as he leaves, I will be re-disinfecting everything in this house. Yeah, because we don't trust your dirty ass. Um, Hi, I'm Amy. I live here. Mm. I'm Freddie. I live here. Remember how just a week ago we were so innocent? Yeah. Well, a week ago we were like, yeah, I mean, I'll probably still go to Horror Hound Weekend. So some news there. Yeah. <laughs> it's been postponed till uh, the week of uh, Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. So that's good news. I mean, mm-hmm. that's smart. It makes sense. It does. Um, but it, it's still kind of... It still kind of hurts. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. I mean, I, it is for the best, but we can feel two things at the same time. Yeah, like um, some of our friends that were going to come into town were like, "Well, we'll still come and hang out," and now we're like, "No, <laughs> no, we're not going to do that." Everybody, stay yeah. where you are. <laughs> yeah, our Italian friends they were like, "We're going to come to Horror Ham," but yeah. like, nope. <laughs> I was going to be in the office on Monday. Was my original plan until yesterday, and here locally, we are going to experience a pretty big spike this week from what everyone's saying spike. and um and kelly and i are both in that vulnerable group is yeah. why we're isolating oh you're so vulnerable yeah. that's so nice we are healthy yeah we're trying to stay healthy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so well as, as far as we know but who knows right we but don't know we could have it but <laughs> yeah friday i wasn't sure what was going to happen until um we found out that now, they didn't originate in Hamlin County, but we had two cases being treated at Westchester Hospital, which was just, you know, it's not too far from where me and Amy work. And I was like, well, fuck this shit. <laughs> and uh, I just emailed my boss and told her, like, hey, uh, I can do all my work from home, and I got the beatus, and I ain't risking my life for no pet sense shit, so... So Sorry, Lisa, noise. if you're listening. I hope you're not. Though. Yeah, I that really, would be really, ideal that you don't. I, you, I well, I think any you know, if you have the ability to work from home, and you've got a uh, you know a really cool job, like I'm lucky, Kelly's lucky, Amy can probably hopefully quarantine or self no, isolate. Uh, I mean, of course I can. But here's here's the deal: like there are those of us that are extremely lucky that we can stay home. And there's people oh, who no, just I'm can't. Not saying, yeah. yeah, there's people. Yeah, it's right. Not that I am very lucky. Like because I mean, also if you are listening, uh, she's very cool about it and didn't you know didn't hassle me in any way about it. You know, so not right. everybody has that. Most people don't have. That, really. But there are people that need to keep working in order yeah. for us to survive. Um, and I am so grateful and I would switch places in a heartbeat. I right. work a dumb job that doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Stand up. I stand up next to you. Like Andy works in, in shipping. Like we need you. You right. can't stop. And you we're, know? we're considered infrastructure. Andy, Andy I and I are part of the though. infrastructure. Yeah. So like our jobs in order for the economy to continue to function, not just the economy, somebody people need food to and toilet them. paper. Yeah, and everything else, you know, like, so, again, lucky enough that, you know, I, I can be here. Hopefully, we can uh, find a silver lining in this and do some yeah. more Discord meetups for yeah. our patrons. And, um, meet up, meet up, yeah. meet up. 
Uh, planning right now the last Friday this month. I mean the last Thursday. Sorry, the last Thursday this month at eight p.m. Eastern Standard Time. What's that um, will be our next Discord meetup, March twenty sixth. March twenty sixth, and we'll do a, a little viewing probably. I'm trying to find some old. I, I don't. I'm no guarantee on this. I'm still hunting for them, but like police training videos from the eighties. Like surviving edged weapons and dealing with the satanic bah, bah, panic bah, and stuff. Our Discord meetups again are available to our patrons. Go to patreon.com slash NOTLP. Yep. And welcome Fozzie and Eddie to that group. Welcome them to Cincinnati. And they just moved to Yay. Cincinnati. Welcome, guys. It's yeah. awesome to have them here. This was uh, our, my last out of a house uh, meetup for a long time. We went <laughs> until to their I get home. the all clear. Um, last night at Fozzie Bear, if you're a listener of the show, you know him. Yep. He's um, been a friend of the show forever and ever and ever. Yep. Oh, and he's also appeared on that Mark Patton documentary. Yeah, Scream Queen, which, which is just out. Came out right? Yeah, and you can see that, and he's in there. I don't know if... Do you, is it streaming? Do you have to pay for it? Uh, I don't know. If I know it, they're available on multiple platforms. But yeah, I, don't know if you have to I know you can them. rent it and buy it on multiple platforms. It'll probably eventually be streaming somewhere. I'm sure. I, I have a feeling that it's the kind of thing I'm sure Shutter would would snatch up in an instant. Um, and uh, I haven't I haven't got to watch it yet. I have it. I need to watch it. Um, for all I know, I'm in it. I really don't know. You have plenty of time. <laughs> yeah, plenty of time. <laughs> and now I have time to watch it. So, um, well, it's fine. Like I felt. Mark Patton read my. My last bedtime story, I think. Oh, uh, yeah. was that him? Pajama. At Horror Hound, yeah. Yeah, Kelly, yeah. they do a pajama party at the... Was they it, have. I don't it, know. Was it, they did. They don't anymore. They don't anymore. But. But. Which was that Indianapolis or was that Cincinnati? That, that was years that? ago, though. Years ago. That was did. Cincinnati, I think. Okay. Well, they would do these... They used to do these pajama parties with the DJ and everything, and then someone would read a bedtime story that Kelly would write the bedtime stories for the party. Mm -hmm. And then they'd have a different celebrity read them. He's done it. They did a few times, right? Jamie Kennedy. Didn't he write? Yeah. Jamie Kennedy did one. The guy from Wolf Creek did one. Yeah. Yes, uh, Mark Patton did. One. I think I just did three. Maybe I did three, maybe four, um, but definitely three. They're very cool. They're on YouTube somewhere. You can find them. We should probably get those on our channel at some point. Yeah. And, you know, if we're going to be home and social distancing and hanging out, maybe we'll just pop in this room and Freddie and I'll talk about any of the culture we're uh, consuming. Yeah, I'd like to get through this with you guys because you guys, you guys are listeners. so, we yeah. love you and you'll, I mean, we're lucky to have an outlet. Some people yeah. we're all are this, just isolated we're all with this nothing. together, guys. Yeah, so let's all get through this together. Well, don't forget, um, what's our phone number? 513-666-0456, I think, but go to notlp.com. You can leave us messages. Yeah, 0456, that's right. Okay. Email us at crew at notlp.com, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. If you want to. Et cetera. If you want to reach out. Yeah. This is a, the, one of the fucking most frightening things I've ever experienced in my life. Yeah. And ironically, our theme for this series of podcasts is mm -hmm. bad to worse. Chosen before this got <laughs> to where it's getting. Yeah. I don't know what was worse than this. Yeah. We fucked up. <laughs> it's so ironic. We had this theme on our list for months and months, probably maybe even almost a year. Is it because us has happened? Because what? Is it because of us this happened? No. We did this? Yeah. I because really highly <laughs> doubt that. No, maybe. I'm not. I don't. I don't, I'm not from Wuhan. No, our, our themes that correspond yeah. to the what's going on in the world. So. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, we definitely... We angered the gods. <laughs> we put it out in the air, <laughs> but I didn't create the virus. So we've done... The, this is a rare month where, because of the leap year, we have four podcasts in this series instead of the usual three. We kicked it off with Chosen Survivors, a film about people who were sent to a bunker because of a nuclear holocaust, wherein they ran into a worse situation because there are these aggressive bats down Ironically, there. bats. I know. That's where they, they think they are <laughs> yeah. from. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. I, mean, I totally Yeah, forgot. you love fucking bats so much, Freddie and Andy. They're you they're think great. you're thank you. So then... Uh, I like bats. You're yeah. an idiot. Yeah, that. yeah, they're mostly all right. Deadly. And then we did... Um, was the lady killer the lady next? killers the lady killers for the original lady, the lady killers that was just killers. last week that was just last week <laughs> and i already can you feel like it was a year ago what we have experienced in just one week yeah <laughs> yeah it's been <laughs> it's been <Yeah>. it's been, <laughs> it's been. <laughs> and yeah, uh brown. and then we're uh we're continuing today with blood simple the first coen brothers movie mm -hmm. which is a great thriller 
And then next week we have uh, Mark Watts pick. We're doing Kill List, which is another really great one. Um, so this is. A really, I've always wanted yeah. to see it. I've always wanted an excuse to see it. I never have, so I'm excited. I feel like you're going to love it, Kelly. I hope you do. Um, I've heard, people have said that to me before too. So I uh, yeah I'm yeah. I heard, I heard it's really intense. It is. It's really, really good. I don't even know that I know what it is. That's so good. The less you know, the better. The, so that's and that's how I feel about, about life in general. I thought you guys reviewed it when I wasn't on the show. Like, I, in, I did. In the, lo- in the lost year for me. It was like the one of the, years. when it came out, it was like one of those movies I was obsessed with that nobody else wa- was watching for some reason or another because no one believed me. But Mark believed me. Uh, Freddie Morris. Uh, Such a hipster. It was just like the Rubik's Amazing Rubik's Cube show. It's just the same like thing. It. Oh, the cartoon with the anthropomorphic cube, yeah. Rubik's cube. I'm Rubik. <laughs> oh, the eighties. They'll make mm-hmm. a cartoon of anything. Yeah. Why didn't they get Rubik and Cubert together, and they could both talk like stupid little <laughs> thingies and jump around <laughs> and be colorful? Why couldn't that have happened? I love Cubert. And then they could have hooked up with Pac Man. And been like, do 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 do. That's a you lot of sounds. I mean? <laughs> Batman well, was crazy. a weird ass show, wasn't it? Was it was fucking crazy. Yeah, if you go back and watch it, it was part of USA's Cartoon Express with like that and Captain was Caveman. It cra- didn't they have like yeah. a whole city or something? Yeah, there was yeah. a Pac-Man it was like a whole, so- was yeah. like a whole society, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. But he was Pac-Man. He was Pac-Man. He was like citizen numero uno. That's right, and he had a dog, the Pac Dog. And they had a Pac-Man yep. cat, too, didn't they? Yeah, they had Pac-Kids. And they had Pac-Kids. I'm just going to take a quick nap, and you guys just <laughs> let me know. Yeah. I vaguely remember him driving a car. Yeah. He wore an overcoat, but no pants. He had long, spindly <laughs> legs. He kind of looks yeah. like this creature I created the other yeah. night yeah. Uh, while we were watching Star Trek, and I was thinking all of the alien race names, and I, I thought of the Croutonians, which are croutons with forks <laughs> for legs. <laughs> Yeah. So I drew up this really, uh, and uh, if you want, I'll I'll put it out there for you. Oh, too. please do. I'll put it on our uh, I'll put it on our Patreon right now. Our so Patreon right now. You can uh, you can see the Crutonian, and Amy will continue to make fun of me. I like to make fun of you. This is what see if I have to like hole up with Freddy <laughs> in the house, <laughs> I'm gonna stab him. This is a small house. Um, we are just about a thousand square feet. Uh-huh. Uh, so this is going to be real interesting. The dogs are grumbling at each other right now. So they're already fucking over it. They're pissed. And we haven't even really started. Ooh, it's like The Shining. I know. Ooh. <laughs> and now, I, now I've now i read the book, so I totally understand what could happen. get all the references happen. now. You're going to go in the bathroom and there's going to be a, there's going to be a coronavirus in there. <laughs> Taking a dump. <laughs> You're out of toilet paper. (laughs) I've heard so many uh, podcasts um, that are just like, we're not going to talk about it here. This is where we come to escape. And it's like, I talk about it. Like, this is affecting all of our lives. Let's just kind of be real. Yeah. I keep it real. real. I know you're you're real, real. I keep it 100, y'all. Yeah, that's what the kids are saying now. 100. Mm -hmm. 100. First things first, you're the realest. (laughs) First things first, I'll eat your brains. (laughs) Yeah. Then I'll start rocking gold teeth. It'll be just be a, it'll be a snack for me. Oh, Andy, you little bitch. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I, uh, what are you gonna do? You know, you, you we're just so we're just gonna stay at home, and as long as we still got internet, we're gonna be just fine. All the libraries have closed, but of course, you know, we still have access to ebooks and audiobooks. There's eight billion podcasts. Y'all need a true crime recommendation. Your girl's got eighty five subscribed right now. Damn, bitch. Well, not that many, probably. I got books coming out of my butthole. The True um, Crime Podcast? I've got 20. Skyrim. <laughs> I will be playing Skyrim. Andy almost coughed just then, caught himself. <laughs> You're allowed to cough. I know you don't currently have it. I don't want to worry the, the listeners. Like, oh my God, I'm listening. I'm going to get it. You just got to cough into your cough pocket. Somebody posted this lady, um, a preschool teacher, like a video of her, how she tells her students to cough. And she calls the crook of your elbow your cough pocket. Oh. And that is the cutest motherfucking thing. <laughs> I think I'm going to dab every time I cough now. Yeah. <laughs> is that Tess? Tessie, yeah. Oh, I thought that was Kelly barking. That, well, okay. I was just you kidding. got me. Yeah. No, yeah. Was... She's like, Ruff, Ruff, it's coronavirus isn't something to joke about, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I will say I am enjoying all the memes. The memes are great. 
I mean, if that's one thing that we always look forward to during tragedy, right? Mm-hmm. Just memes. Yeah. Yeah, I got to thank John Baggett. I know he, I, I think he sh- he passed it on, but for the uh, the Mayor Vaughn mm. uh, J- Jaws, uh, the beaches are open meme. Uh, my favorite, uh, I think, of the group because uh, it also is so apt. I think if you're a, a horror fan of any stripe, you thought had that thought. Yeah, it's it's so apropos. Apropos. It also made me laugh. Mm-hmm. Yes. Which is a it's it's a double edged sword because you go to the internet for, you know, a release. But also the internet is also where sweet release. It's where anxiety lives. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Like I said the other day, I just truly miss fighting about Biden and Bernie. Mm-hmm. I miss it. Um, our our primary is coming up Tuesday. I, I absolutely plan on voting because there's other things on the ballot. Um, so I'll be I'll be going to do that. But I hope I see the grannies that are working the place. I hope they're keeping themselves clean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nothing's better than a clean <laughs> granny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you going to check to see if they're clean? Keep it clean, bitch. (laughs) Grandma. Wash. Scrub that pussy. Don't leave it it hanging. You got to say it. (laughs) Wash your pussy. Um, It's like, I like my granny's clean. mm -hmm. You're going to check to see if they're clean? You know, that's a thing. (laughs) That's a thing. I never thought till just right now. Huh? Granny pimping? Disinfecting your grannies. <laughs> your granny's so nasty. No, like, yeah, it's usually a lot of elderly people who work the polls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you better wipe those down with Clorox wipes. <laughs> Gonna make it rain on those grannies. Uh, you shouldn't get your grannies wet. That just can exacerbate everything. Yeah, it makes more of them. Yeah. yeah. Don't feed them. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine how gross that would be? Although I've seen more young people working in the polls <laughs> uh, recently in the last uh, few elections. So maybe since the kids are out you of school right once. now. I did do it once. Yeah. <laughs> you worked the poll once. I worked that poll. Uh, I remember. It's yeah. just to get yourself through college, though. Uh, yeah, hey, I had bills to pay. Kelly, I sent you my Croutonian. It's I new- saw it's awesome. Yeah, it's scary, it's right? Quite adorable. It's very. Well, I think it's kind of it's very cute to me. You should be terrified of it. It's like an old school well, Doctor it, Who monster. Well, he is keto, if so he was, can't. If here's the thing, if it was real, it would be terrifying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. But the, drawing, but the drawing of it is adorable. Okay. Is, well, is that not what you were going for? Let me. You right, should be hor- see if you could be horrified right. by it. Change right, your frame. Can of we mind. start over? Ask yeah. me again. What do you Ask think of the Crutonian drawing I sent you, Kelly? Hey, fuck you. Fuck yeah. you for sending that to me. All Night, right? Pure nightmare fuel, it. right? I just, I oh, I was like, oh, what did Freddie go? Ah! And I was like, God damn you for, like, I lost four sand points <laughs> thanks to that goddamn uh, thing. You fucking nerd. And I immediately deleted it. I uh, I posted that to our Patreon page so that you uh, you can sick. create, we can, we can group create a monster's manual entry if you play Dungeons mm-hmm. and Dragons for it. Damn nerds. But, fuck coronavirus you've just infected our fan base with insanity you're <laughs> yeah. a monster what armor class do you think that thing has 50 i think at least at least 50 you gotta the th- trick of it is you gotta take it out of the forks before you can attack the head what are mm-hmm. D groups vul- the, the gonna, vulnerable spot mm-hmm. what are the D groups gonna do during this time play virtually remote yeah. Yeah. They play, yeah, remote. Okay. That's probably how most of them do it now, anyway. Oh, okay. They're young used to socially they, distancing. <laughs> yeah, young and, these youngins don't like to be around each other, man. There is an enjoyable little uh, Twitter meme thing going around right now about how Gen X is the generation that can truly deal with this because we were the latchkey kids. We were the forgotten. I saw that. <laughs> we're I like I I don't I don't buy into all this generational nonsense sensory, but like. Uh, that one does ring a little bit true, actually. It does. It's like, yeah, I, I'm happy to stay in my room. I don't even have to leave my room. Hey, I was an only child, too, so I am fucking ready to go. You be the la- you you and the roaches, there's yep. going to be left. That's it. Um. All right. I mean, the world's on fire, and all that's right. fine, and Disney is closed. And What's that's that fine. thing that Pat Oswalt said, his wife said, the world is chaos? Be chaos, kind. be kind. Be kind. Yeah. Chaos, that's just... Be kind. just that's, that's just a good way to live your life right now, especially. You should always be doing that, but especially, yeah. Exactly. I'm getting that post 9 11 feeling. Christmas. I think a lot of people are. What'd you yeah. say, Cal? 
What do you say? I said it's like Christmas. Just be nicer. Just be nice. Um, anything think else? of it as Christmas. Corona Christmas. Corona, Corona Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> Yeah, Mecca Maliki Maka is. Did you guys <laughs> anything else for the top before we get into uh, the other stuff? No, just a reminder that um, we're here. We're here. We want you to be yeah. here and safe and stay the fuck home. Right. Hello, boys and girls. It's time for straight to video Russian roulette. <laughs> It was just a small spot, just a bit of dry skin. Then it spread, and it kept spreading. Everything okay? The outer layer of your skin is aging and dying at an extreme rate. Now I can crumble it off like dried leaves. Can't skin be transplanted? The body might reject the new skin. I can't take it anymore. I can replace it with healthy skin. Skin from other people. I dug this. Yeah. I didn't love it. It was a good movie. I really dug the song in the trailer. Again? Replace. It came out in 2017. Uh, written and directed by Norbert Kyle, I think is how that's pronounced. Um, and Richard Stan- Norbert. <laughs> Richard Stanley has a co-writing credit on this, uh, who recently uh, just released Color Out of Space that Kelly and I oh, yeah. talked about, you know, oh, the director of oh, hardware. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, he also, there's another writing credit on here, uh, for a writer named, uh, Scarlett Amaris for additional dialogue. So I guess she punched it up. Uh, this is, and I feel like if you didn't hear the synopsis from last week that you're better off not hearing that and going into this kind of blind, I think that trailer gives you just enough. Um, it's got a great score. It's atmospheric. The acting's really good. The effects are good. It has Barbara Crampton in it, which is fun. Um, yeah, boy! Does she, yeah. Have a, does she have a significant role, or is it kind of like one of those Luke Henderson cameo type things? Did you say Luke Henderson? Lance Henriksen. Henriksen. <laughs> <laughs> it's, Luke Henriksen? It's, it's close enough. It's a me- okay. She has a medium-sized role in it, but a large part in the actual plot. Um, the lead is uh, Rebecca Forsyth, who is William Forsyth's daughter. She, I so I was sort of in the room, but I didn't watch the movie. But she looked a lot like Elizabeth Olsen. She did. I thought the same thing. Yeah, yeah, very Becky very Fors. Much. Huh? <laughs> Becky her, Fors. Becky Fors. Yes. Um, she was very good. Uh, she is this character, uh, Kira, who has in the open of this, she has amnesia. Kira Norris. <laughs> space nine mm-hmm. uh she has amnesia and this other woman in her building named sophia kind of becomes her good friend they become lovers as well and yeah they, uh yeah and he says Ooh, lesbians and uh andy andy's making the scissor motion <laughs> because he's a child she has a uh kira has a spot on her hand that's real dry it looks a lot like I have uh, one too. plaque psoriasis I've kind been, of i've been washing my hands so much yeah with it, and this spreads super fast across her body before it's almost got her entire arm is covered in it. It looks like when you were a kid, if you don't know what plaque psoriasis looks like, if you went and put Elmer's glue on your hands and then peeled it off, you know, uh, like you're like, I'm sloughing. Um, <laughs> you know, when you were a kid and you were saying you yeah. were sloughing. You're sloughing. <laughs> Cough pocket. 
And, she, uh, and he just coughed into his cough coughed. pocket. I'm in a panic already. Uh, no, uh, um, so it begins to spread, and she goes to see this. She finds a note in her apartment, and it has. She's like, "Oh, apparently I was seeing a doctor, this uh, Doctor Krober, and it's this big Krober Institute thing." And this is Barbara Crampton's character, this doctor she goes to to get help with this skin problem, and she gives her some medicine, and um, she's hanging out with Sophia one night when Sophia cuts her hand and a little piece of skin falls off and she just, it, when it, she puts it on her arm on the, the, the part that's peeling away, it like immediately grafts on Ooh. and heals, heals that spot. Um, so she realizes, you know, Oh, this might be the thing that cures me because this thing is spreading so fast and she can't get the help she needs. Plus she keeps forgetting things kind of like in memento, where she doesn't have like a full reset, but like she's missing big parts of something's going on in her brain too. Right. So it has that mystery element of every day she's missing pieces and she's trying to piece together why this is happening to her, who she is. And um, she even tries to steal, you know, skin from a corpse, but it won't work. It has to be from a living person. Ooh. And this is where she's in this rock in a hard place situation for the remainder of the film, trying to combat this fastly moving uh, deterioration. And, but it has a lot of twists to it and it's a good sci-fi movie in that there are moments in it that are really smart and sharp. Um, and it does come from some pretty original angles. It's kind of a Cronenberg. Is that like a body horror type thing? Yeah, definitely body horror Cronenberg style. Um, How are the, like effects uh the the effects are very good they're pra like practical gross out skin effects i mean it's probably going to make get, you sick get under your skin don't eat salami <laughs> or cornflakes or anything like that while you're watching it it might uh it might make you puke um salami or cornflakes you know oh, i love that for lunch <laughs> and that said your again, basic lunch there are there are much better body horror movies out there than this, but this one is pretty good. I, I think it's worth your your time, especially if you don't know more than what I've just told you going into it. Uh, it, it it had a nice payoff. I enjoyed it pretty well. Seems like it'd be more fitting for like an episode of X Files or like Black Mirror, maybe yeah, something like that. It did feel kind of like a Black Mirror. Kinda but episode. It, it, could, did it feel like um, it was stretched out? Or the, I mean, the, <laughs> it felt pretty stretched yeah. out. I mean, it, it, like I said, I feel like it, it could fit like an hour show as opposed to like a whole movie. No, uh, I mean, I think it had enough to sustain its runtime. Um, it may have, could have lost maybe 10, 15 minutes. It's, it's run times an hour or 41 minutes. Um, but like I said, I, I think it's stylish and interesting. And um, I think it's the director's. I want to say it's just like their third or fourth feature, maybe. No, I take that back. Well, what we've learned from Kelly's recent um, travails with his foot, she should have been going after baby foreskins. <laughs> right. Yep. That's how you they, do it. Uh, they close you up. They close you up like nobody's fucking business, <laughs> man. They got those stretchy little fucking... <laughs> fucking stop. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's his third Turtle feature. Mac. But make sure you, they're responsibly sourced. Yeah. Uh, you don't want uh, GMO baby foreskins. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely not. You want free range ones. Yeah. Where the, where the baby's yeah. been treated well. Yeah. Check, check on the, you make sure it's a humane yeah. uh, situation. Yeah. This director's German. This movie has a German vibe. It's not a German film, but it, Deutschland. If you, if you know what I mean by that. It's not a German film. All right, well, cool. So you definitely recommend it. It's on Shutter, is that correct? Yep. Yeah, I mean, it has a it has an origin of German okay, Canadian. Let's get this completely it's correct. Of German, it's of German descent. <laughs> it's a Canadian <laughs> film, but it it has German it has a it's a Canadian film with sauerkraut sprinkled on. Ah, it I see, I see. For it's flavor. mom was Canadian. Its dad was German, or the other way around. Uh, I would say its mom was definitely Canadian. The dad's an absentee dad. Ah. One sixteenth Lakota. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so how was Barbie Cramps in this? Was she good? Yeah, I think she's always pretty solid. I, I, I always yeah. like seeing her whenever she pops up. She yeah. my favorite. Well, her and Tiffany Shepis, they kind of, you know, I like to imagine them like playing a, a game of chess uh, for my affection. Ah, interesting. No, they are hardcore bitches and I love it. 
And I say bitch in a loving manner. Bitch? Bitch. All right, let's see who's going to uh, watch and review the movie for next week. We have a Jack in the Box, and we're going to start a cranking. Kelly, you're up first, baby doll. This thing is so creepy, this this damn Jack in the Box. Uh Uh-oh, uh-oh. You're it, baby. You've uh, pulled that. You've pulled that one like right away. I don't uh, know like, how. I, I'm. I, I, I'm going to make you start using a four sided die like in Dungeons and Dragons, like when you fight a Crutonian. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ke- Kelly's dexterity save failed. It so, uh, I should have. I should have bumped my dex up. I. I was just worried about being a fighter, man. Mm-hmm. I wasn't even thinking about, uh, you know, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Dagger, 1d4 plus 1, but your strength modifier. Oh, Jesus. All right. This, is a, this film is on Netflix, available to stream. It's called Girl on the Third Floor. Stars CM Punk. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the wrestler. The wrestler. You mean the actor. I mean the actor. The I, had the the actor. <laughs> I, I had this advertised to me. Yeah. Um, I wish it starred Rafiki or Sexual Chocolate. A husband with a bad track record tries to start anew by renovating a rundown Victorian for his family, only to find he's tackled a house out of hell. Oh, oh boy. Did I there. say Rafiki? That's yeah. that's a uh, that's Lion King. Yeah. Rafiki's Planet Watch. Who, who? What was his name? The 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 sumo wrestler from the WWF or WWE? He? I remember he used to sit on people's faces. That big diaper thing. That was like his finisher. Was he so, would rub somebody his dirty butt? Somebody listening to this is screaming yeah. in their car. That's somebody's probably Dave home. or Jason. It, he's called. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I can't remember his name. I don't know. Rafiki's playing. That's watch. adorable, okay. kid, Freddy. <laughs> Freddy is nothing if not stupidly adorable. That's where so, the go- that's where the goats are. That is where the goats are. Um. Yeah. So Kelly, you'll be bringing us that review next week. Well, that'll be uh, something. Something to really look forward to, everybody. <laughs> well, there's your problem. It's a you house might from, love it. It's a house from hell. I might. I might watch it today. I don't know. Yeah. Who the fuck knows? Yeah. All you got is time. <laughs> That's all we all have. All right, gang. Okay. We'll be right back. All righty, then. What I know about is Texas. And down here, you're on your own. Hello. Have a good time? Hey, what's it? Your husband. I got a job for you. It's not strictly legal. You want me to kill him? Ray, let's get out of here. <laughs> What do you want to do? What's funny is if it's not you she's sleeping with, it's someone else. What's really going to be funny is when she gives you that look and says, I don't know what you're talking about. You look stupid now. <laughs> and we should just review this like we all talk like Emma Walls. Emma hey, 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 Walls. Hey, yeah, I really like this more. <laughs> Opening my mouth is a lot. Of hey, trouble. Andy, I liked this movie. So did I. Do you thought I was going to hate yeah. it because I don't like the Coen Brothers? Mm-hmm. Um, it definitely. I would have liked it to be a little. I like, like their dialogue is a little precious. A little it, precious. There was Even not much dialogue. Was, I was to say, yeah. But when they did speak, a little precious. It was pretty good though. It was good. I pretty good it. dialogue. I love it. Yeah. I love the style, man. It. Um, I have a lot to say about this movie. Uh, uh, it's pretty fucking cool. And um, yeah, man. I thought, 
I thought the dialogue was good. Yeah, a great uh, bit of dialogue. The detective in it, Walsh's character says, give me a call whenever you want to cut my head, cut off my head. I can always I crawl around part. without it. That's the kind of character. He's, he's, he's the boogeyman in this. Yeah. In a lot exactly. of ways. Um, Which is interesting because you look at him like, hey, he's not threatening. Yeah, he looks like the man in the big yellow hat from Curious George if he let himself go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is the Coen Brothers' first uh, film that they released, their feature. Uh, simple, the blood simple description is, uh, a rich but jealous man hires a private investigator to kill his cheating wife and her new man, but when blood is involved, nothing is simple. Okay, so this is Dan Hedaya. Carla's uh, ex-husband from Cheers. Mm-hmm. I love Dan Hadaya. I love his face. I love his voice. He's so awesome. He is great. And he re- owns this bar strip club, which you never see. You All you see of the strippers in this club are their ankles and feet. Yeah. Which is, yeah. I thought, a cool choice. As um, God intended. Yeah. It's not intended. It was one of those Middle Eastern strip clubs mm-hmm. where, yeah. Um, so Marty... Uh, he doesn't seem... He's a sleazy Marty. guy. <laughs> What's that? Marty! Oh, Marty! <laughs> That's so great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Marty doesn't seem terrible at first. He just seems sleazy. And yeah. he's, he's got a couple of employees, uh, Maurice and Ray, who are his bartenders. And, who are uh, you woo-wooing at? No, it's Maurice. Oh. oh. <laughs> He's, he has oh, a space yeah. cowboy, and then he I has the gangster thought somebody was attractive. Uh, Ray starts having an affair with Abby. Which is Marty's wife. Francis McDormand's character. Yeah. Um, and at first, it is almost a civilized parting of ways. Ray has two pay, or a paycheck left for two weeks. And he decides to go back and say, <laughs> with the balls on somebody to like mm-hmm. cheat on his uh, cheat on his boss's wife or cheat with his boss's wife, and then to come back and be like, hey, I need my last paycheck. Right. Well, Ray doesn't know that Marty knows, right? At this point, no, he, they no, know. He knows. Yeah, because he, he calls. Knows. He calls and yeah. the hotel. Like he's aware. There. Yeah, because yeah. he had already he had already hired the detective, the Emmett Walsh character, to spy on them, or to spy on Abby. And then that he takes pictures of them together at the hotel. But he also he I guess Plant patty cake. <laughs> yeah, I think the detective had called him from the hotel and said, oh, here's he, where they're at. They're in this room. Yeah, and then he picks up the phone. And Marty, so calls. Marty. Yeah. Yeah. So at that point, it's, he's kind of like, OK, the gig is up. The jig. The jig. Jeff. The Jeff. The Jeff is up. Get out. Um, choosy moms and all that. Uh, Marty, again, like I said, it seems like he's kind of keeping it together. He's kind of pitiful at this point. No, he's, he's definitely, uh, sad and angry. Yeah. Um, but then he, he decides he's going to go talk to, after he tries to kidnap Abby. Yeah. From Ray's house. Yeah. Um, and they defeat him. She breaks his finger and his pussy finger now and then just fucking destroys his balls. (laughs) Yeah. Um, he's she like, kicks him so hard in the balls he throws up. Yeah. So he's like, you know what the fuck I'm going to do, bitch? And he goes and hires um, Emmett Walsh to, uh, I'm just going to call him Mehmet Walsh because it's Mehmet. easier. <laughs> Mehmet. <laughs> um, cool, Mehmet. He's like, I want you to kill him and get rid of the bodies. And, Mehmet Otter. And Mehmet Otter is like, all right. Yeah. Well, so whenever, I'm sorry, whenever the detective is meeting with Marty, he always has his cigarette lighter, the Zippo. That says Elks Man of the Year along the side, and Lauren, which is the detective's first name, engraved on the front of the Zippo. It's always sitting on Marty's desk in his office. I love that. Like, this is something the Coen Brothers do really well: is they set up those little pieces. Oh, they're yeah. The minute you see the gun, you're yeah. like, okay. They linger on these things. The minute you see the knife later, they it's, linger. It's on like it. classic film noir. The yeah. lighter they like linger. It's all very like. That's a thing. There's only three bullets in the movie. Yeah. Like at that point, yep. like the, all these things are important yeah. as it plays out. It's like a Hitchcock where like, uh, you know why this says you're going to see, if you see a gun, it's going to check off yeah, gun. Yeah. yeah. Or like, um, but the one thing I guess that is a little bit different from that is the incinerator mm-hmm. because they show the incinerator a lot. That's out behind the bar. And you think that's where some bodies are going to end up, but they don't. Mm-hmm. It's a MacGuffin, to use, a MacGuffin. A, to use another, <laughs> Like, that's uh, your that's your one thing that you think is going to play a larger role and it doesn't yeah. um 
so Marty hires the detective to to kill. I love this sequence when he goes to oh, meet. Yeah. yeah, when he goes to meet him, and uh, and he's just hanging out with all these young kids. Yeah, which is kind of crazy. He, he lives in his car there at that camp, right? Like, is that yeah. what the impression that you got? Like, kinda. Yeah, he's just he's just a really gross person. Like, yeah. there's flies on him. When you see him, there are flies crawling on him. Yeah. Which again is like. This has a lot of horror movie tropes for for a film noir. Yeah. There's a lot of horror movie stuff in this. Oh like, yeah, for sure. Like your evil characters flies all over him. Um, there are jump scares in this movie. There are POV stalking shots, like in Halloween. Um, oh yeah, you've got live burial. Yeah, you got a live burial. That scene is chilling, man. Um, yeah. Which had when they do that now i feel like the coen brothers is like this is before they had a lot of laughs in their movies yeah this is not a funny movie by any stretch like there's a couple of it laughs. was peppered throughout yeah the little, little moments of levity mostly yeah. with, it's not maurice it's Maurice. Maurice. <laughs> yeah which is weird who i by the way yeah Oh, no, you go ahead, and then i'll say i was just going to describe Maurice. It, to me he it seems like that role was almost um oj simpson from looking at that mm-hmm. guy I feel like they wanted OJ Simpson <laughs> and oh, I, yeah. and I'd be like uh dodged a bullet there, I guess. But, um, Oh, more like dodged a big old knife. Yeah. Damn. Um, well, she did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't mention John Getz, the guy, well, Kelly, you were starting to make a point. Go ahead. I'm well, I was just going to point out that no way did Sam Raimi not at least shoot two or three of the scenes in this movie. Like there are like two or three scenes that are so clearly Sam Raimi, you know, he's buddies with them. He raised money for this film. Mm-hmm. And he, he, yeah, he shot even, the, didn't he do the, help them with the trailer? Like, and they use Bruce he Campbell shot the trailer. Yeah. And I yeah, think he shot the trailer. So I feel like there's a couple places where like, it is like a hundred percent Sam Raimi, either he, they were like doing an homage or he was there and was just like, yeah, you want to do this one? Yeah. Well, I also uh, think like, especially don't you feel like these filmmakers kind of shared tricks. They were kind of like how Spielberg oh, yeah. and Coppola and, and all those guys like, Oh, exactly. Yeah. They're buddies. So like, right. but that's why I said he, he was, you know, he was around then too. So like, I can see them just being like, Oh yeah, we, he does that. So let's, let's take a thing from Sam and let me use that. You know what I mean? But there's a couple different places that w- that stabbing scene later on is, is totally evil dead. The wind where she stabs his hand. Oh yes. I love that. It's so creepy too. Like, uh, we'll, we'll get to yeah. that when we talk about the thing. We'll right. get to that. But I just wanted to point out the Sam Raimi connection. I feel in my heart that he was actually there working with them on those scenes just for fun. Yeah, no doubt. I'm sure it has, it has, it smacks of, uh, uh, I, I like I told Amy I said I, uh, the reason I thought she might enjoy this one whereas she's not a huge Coen Brothers fan is I feel like they were still working it out they hadn't found obviously it's their first movie but they hadn't fa- even found like necessarily their voice so I, feel I like, know yeah. it's not yeah. as absurd yet um, uh, uh, precious, like you said precious not as precious yet and, and yeah. actually one, one thing in the co- the only thing that I feel like is a con in this movie and I loved I loved it so but the the only criticism I really had is actually I, I feel like they weren't confident enough yet to not have like a score and just use songs because I felt like the score kind of made it seem cheaper than it was that like it was like real over the top and it just it it distra- it was distracting for me for me and Elise and Colin we all watched it together. Well, it's funny because uh, uh, Carter Burwell is actually the. They, he has worked with them ever since as they're like the guy who is in charge of their music. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just funny. I, I just, that you, you see, so, here's such a big difference there, but I agree with you. Yeah. I, it's a good point. Well, like, I it, think it was, this is, Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Kelly. Oh no, no, you go, man. No, like, um, like you said, this is like, you could tell their, their style hasn't the Cohen stereotype, like the prototypical Cohen brother style hasn't been in the movies yet because this has felt so grounded yeah it was definitely more grounded than because, anything else um, done. i like one of my favorite things like how everybody looked like normal normal people yeah yeah like you look at francis mcdormand and like you know don dan hedaya he's not his typical dan hedaya role it's yeah. very toned down definitely yeah oh yeah 
And for SMA dormant, it looks like somebody you could you could you would run into anywhere. Yeah, that's why it's like this is effective because it felt so real. So, um, just to get back to the music, I think part of the reason that they didn't have, I think they probably wanted to do that, Kelly, with with the pop songs, um, in particular. I think the idea may have been to put like '60s hits in this movie. And then yeah. th- there was licensing, a lot of licensing issues because they it was a low budget movie. Oh, so, for sure. Because they did have, the, you know, the four tops where they yeah. where they play. Uh, what is that song called? Um, You're sweet. Anyways, uh, the song that they play on the jukebox in the opening and close of the movie. Um, they even had to replace oh, that. It's the same. Yeah, same song. song. Yeah, I remember that because they used that for a uh, commercial in the 80s is the same yeah. old sides <laughs> it, it was i think it was like a potato commercial yeah and yeah. they were tired of all the same old sides yeah and uh it was this Probably new product or something. yeah something yeah. like that so uh they they actually lost the rights to that at one point and they had to go in and replace it the way i heard the story was they had to replace that song with i'm a believer i think it was a monkey song. Right. But they had to use the, they couldn't even afford the monkeys mm-hmm. version. And I think they had to use the, um, the Neil diamond version. I think he wrote it. Oh wow! I think that might be why. He wrote a lot of their stuff. Yeah. He wrote, he definitely wrote daydream. Believer, yeah. Uh, what, I'm a believer. Yeah. Or where I'm a believer. It was one of those. And, um, I just, I don't remember seeing it with that song. But I feel like I'm judging from when I originally saw this, I might have been in there when I first saw it. But like I always associate that jukebox moment, I think is a great setup. Yeah. Well, the, the use the use of pop songs would remind me of how Tarantino does his how he uses music too. Yeah. Oh yeah, that. no, that that was perfect. And yeah, I I didn't even think they needed to add any more than they already had licensed. I just felt like the score in between, like if they had just taken that completely out. And let those places been silent. Yeah, I think instead of having like this bombastic over the top, this is a tense moment, music, <laughs> which like we we know it is. He's sneaking up on her. Like, um, I think that would have been. I think later on they might have done that. You know. Yeah, in this movie they used it's the same old song. We talked about that, but they also played Louie Louie, um, and uh, the lady in the reggae red. version. Yeah, reggae. Yeah, there's a bunch. That. There's a bunch of stuff in there. There's a number of songs they, that they play. Yeah, and they had a. Uh, they used um, "Sweet Dreams," the Patsy Klein song, which I thought was uh, used really well. So uh, Marty hires Mehmet, and so uh, Mehmet sneaks into Ray's place, and they're sleeping, and he's thinking about it, and then you kind of cut to um, the detective Mehmet. Mm-hmm. I like saying Mehmet. Well, he steals he steals the gun out of takes uh, the gun. He's going to use the gun out of Abby's purse. Um, and the scene kind of ends there. And now, cut to he's back. You know, he's like, "Hey, Marty, it's time to meet. I need my money." Um, and he goes and talks to Marty. Mehmet needs his money. Mehmet, Mehmet better have my money. Mehmet, Marty better have my money. Mehmet needs a new pair of shoes. Um, so they go and they meet at the bar, and he's like here's your proof. And he shows him a picture of Ray and Abby in bed, but they look like they are dead. They have bullet yeah. holes in them and blood. It's a black and white photo, but you, you get the drift. It's pretty convincing. It's convincing. Yeah. But I think if you, you understand as a movie watcher mm-hmm. that th- something's probably up here, but the Cohen, that you didn't yeah. see the, the murder itself. Yeah. You see the they show him at the window with mm-hmm. the gun and then you see a flash, which insinuates he shot them, but it's the flash of his camera. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 but he does a really good job he, of faking those photos. He's convinced Marty, and Marty um, pukes for the second time in the movie. Yeah, because he's like, "Holy shit, it's you know, it's done. I wanted it, but holy shit, it's done." Um, of course, at this point, you know, Mehmet has lit his cigarette and left his his lighter, and it's lingered on in the film. He's left it on the desk. Marty left, put the fish on top, on top of it. Of it. So you're yeah. like, up, oh, saw that. Because his his alibi was he was out of town fishing in Corpus yeah. Christi. Um, and then Marty goes to the safe to get the money and switcheroos the photo and keeps the photo. And meanwhile, Mehmet's like, I'm going to need that back. 
but he doesn't know that Marty has switched it. So we got some shit going on. So we've gone from oh. bad and we're getting worse here. Yeah, this is where we're things- about to double cross mm-hmm. each other. But then our friend MMMM Walsh <laughs> is like, I'm just going to go fucking ape. And he just shoots Marty with yeah. Abby's gun. Yeah, he's got the money. Yeah, he's, he's already got, got what the money. he did for it, and he has one loose end. Do you think? Well, it, I, I, oh, you go ahead. Well, I was going to say, is it a loose end situation, or is it you insulted me and treated me badly? I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill you. Let may I present a third possibility? Yeah, I thought it might have been his plan the whole time to to to, to get, but like out from under this dude to get completely separated from the situation by fr- taking and using her gun to kill him and fake, like faking that photo and taking it back. It just looks like she did it. And, right. and so he would then have his money. He would be completely out oh, okay. from under what does nuts and she'd be on the hook for it. And no one would know about his involvement at all. None oh yeah. Wiser. Yeah. That's exact. I agree with you. 100%, oh, yeah, that's Kelly, especially it. when you go back and rewatch this, there's even an argument to be made for the fact that Lauren, the detective w- pushed Marty into asking him to kill yeah. him. Be- that like, he didn't ask for the photos of them together in bed. He gave him the most incendiary version of what was happening. So maybe he was always yeah. kind of trying to, because that's a bigger job. Up. Well, it's like, do you want fries with that? Right. Where if you're, if you're a, a, a dirty deed guy, the, the version, right, he's upselling. yeah, he's upselling him, but you can't just say, Hey, I can do this for you. What you do is you, you, you get the person excited about it. Oh, I never thought about that. And then you let them come to you with it. And they think it was their idea and he, he could upsell them to this much bigger job. Yeah, he supersized it. Yeah. And then he gets the money and he, he also completely manages his risk from the first act by saying he knows all along. I'll get the money once I have the You're money. Right. I'm going to kill Marty. Yeah, and frame ha- somebody else. And it makes perfect sense that she's the Patsy yeah. or Ray, either one. Yeah, that one. It would look like one of them had done it. So you think at this Which, point? What, what, oh. uh, I just want to say that was a great like what moment. I know um, because yeah. I hadn't put it all together later on when we get and we'll get to this. But when all of a sudden I realized that she was a patsy completely, I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> uh, so Marty's dead, right? Or so you think. Yeah. But anyway, in the meantime, Ray has come back to the bar because he's like, you know, he I wants need my money because <laughs> I need to get out of here. And uh, he finds dead Marty and he's like, he sees the gun. Right. And in, instead of kind of calling the police, he picks the gun up. Yeah. Assuming it was her. And he thinks it's her that she, cause it's her gun and her ex-husband mm-hmm. or soon to be. She's like, Oh no, she did this. I have to protect her. So he, Lauren didn't count on this part. Right. He, this is the part of his plan that where, where the whole happens. Right. This is where it gets extra worse. That's why he kicked the gun under. He, that yeah. took the gun out of the equation so the police would find it later. Right. Exactly. That's what he assumed, that the police, that somebody would find him, they would call the cops, and then that would take care of it. Right. But stupid dumb Ray fucks it all up, and he starts. He cleans up the uh, blood, and he puts the body in his car and throws... The only time the incinerator is used, because he drives, he sees it, and he drives past it, and you think... Yeah. Dump the body in there, but he just throws his bloody like towels and stuff yeah. in there and his jacket. And he, they, uh, they even hint at like you were saying when they set that up earlier. He, he Marty even tells he suggests using the incinerator yeah. to get rid of their bodies. Right. Um. So Ray has just fucking blown this shit wide open, and he's got a dead body in the backseat of the car, and he's driving along. This was a creepy scene. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, oh yeah because he's it's texas we never said that but this they're out in the middle of nowhere empty road he's driving along he's got this dead body in the car and i get i don't remember exactly does he make a sound yeah does marty yeah, make a sound yeah. in the back seat yeah he and ray just like fucking pulls over and runs out of the car like holy well, shit that was awesome man. ray's yeah. already listening to like 
a coast to coast AM kind of show. He's out yeah. in the middle of nowhere. Like there's this fire and brimstone kind of talk on the radio mm-hmm. and stuff about the Jupiter and all the planets aligning and all this strange stuff. And then he hears like, uh, like the, the movement, the sound, I guess of breathing yeah. or movement or whatever. Were you going to say something? Cal Cal? No. Nah. Nah, bruh. So, uh, you know, Ray's like, holy shit. And he's like kind of taking a minute in a field like, oh, my gosh. So he walks back to the car and it's empty because Marty's still alive and he's crawling down the street. And Ray's like, whole sequence, man, is nuts. It is. There's a lot of you see a lot of decision making under pressure in this movie. Mm -hmm. And what's I think what the Coen brothers do super well and they continue to do it after this movie is they you get to watch characters think like you you see it every time the detectives on the screen, you, you get to watch them stop and think through what his next step is. It's like watching like a big game of chess. And in this scene, you get to watch Ray calculate what to do next. And it's all paced out to. Um, Marty crawling along the ground, kind of pitiful. He, as yeah. bad as this guy is, like you still kind of feel sorry for him. I think at this point, yeah. Um, and what ratchets this whole situation up to the next level is a, a semi truck light is on the horizon. Yeah, it's coming down the road, so and it it's increases. Gonna discover. It. Yeah. So Ray gets Marty. I think he's first. He thinks about running him over. Mm-hmm. Yes, he's he gets about in the car, it. and then he's like, "Can't do that." And then he goes. Well, and there's grabs also him. the shovel. He's going to hit him with the shovel. Oh, then he gets the shovel. He's going to hit him with the shovel, and then he's like, then he sees the truck, and he's like, "Well, I don't want to do this anymore." So he picks him up and puts him back in the car. He pukes blood all over him. Though. Yeah, part of that. and then drives him into the field and digs a hole and puts his alive ass in it and buries him alive. Yeah, and there's a great moment too, which I, I this. After watching the Ballad of Buster Scruggs and that whole the Tom Waits story with the prospector, that that prospector yeah. sequence reminds me a lot of this moment in this movie, yeah. um, where Marty's in the hole. Marty has the gun, and this is yeah. another kind of just pitiful moment yeah. for Marty. It's his last ditch effort. His pussy fingers already broken, mm-hmm. so he's using his middle finger to pull the trigger, and uh, he's he's just futile you think he if you didn't know you know the first time you watch this you're like he's gonna it's he's gonna shoot him and he's gonna fall into the grave and that's yeah. gonna be like the next turning point in the movie but it's just clicks the, mm-hmm. it's empty um and then he just kind of takes the gun away from him ray does and uh and marty doesn't hardly fight that's the thing about it that's super sad he's got, yeah, yeah he's dying and yeah yeah it was rough and at this point you know ray thinks abby did this She's at home, well, has no idea. Real quick, I wanted to point out, it's interesting because through the first couple parts of that sequence where he's making these different decisions, you're thinking like, oh, you know, he doesn't want to kill this guy. And like he, he keeps trying to distance himself from it. And you think it's out of this kind of goodness, but then he ends up killing him in yeah. a worse way than any of the other three really would have been. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Monstrous. Yeah. When he buries him and it's pulsing, the, but it, that yeah, part, it's, oh. like a, it's like a, it's like just a complete like reversal. You're like, oh, I guess that's not why. I don't know. Well, <laughs> like, I think it was the least hands on way he could do it. Yeah. Well, you, yeah, you're probably right, but it yeah. wasn't out of some like. Yeah, no. I, I get you. So, um, you know, Ray's hanging out with Abby, and they're. It, this is a very sitcom situation. <laughs> Nobody's is. saying the thing, but they both think well, different things. This is like what I, in the beginning, it fr- the movie frustrated me because there was so little dialogue yeah. and nothing was going on really. Nothing was being really said. Exactly. But then it leads up. This is why they got to the point where they are yeah. because nobody was saying, communicating. Like he should have walked in that room and go, I took care of it for you. I, I, I saw that you yeah. shot him and I've hit I have the gun and he's 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 away and yeah. she'd have been like wait I didn't do that I didn't kill him so, but that's not what they do yeah. it, w- it was at this point that it clicked for me why there was so little dialogue because yeah. it needed not to have dialogue for them to get their you know wires crossed and not right. really know what's going on well yeah also though it, it does feel like they have some motivation and the characters themselves and being withhold a little withholding from each other. About well, I think that's just the did. type of people they are. Yeah. And 
you know, it, there was not no reason. Some people just don't like talking. Right. Yeah. And that's just, I felt that's how just the type of people they are. I've never been that person. Yeah. Hence, I do a podcast. Well, and then there, she also had the bad luck of using that phrase that, that Dan Hadaya's character had, had said earlier to, uh, to Ray about, you know, I, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, something about I didn't do. You think I did something funny, and that has something Marty yeah. had said to Ray earlier. A kind of yeah, like she'll get you with that. Yeah, yeah. It was like she said I didn't do nothing yeah. funny, or yeah. so. And I also got the feeling that these are kind of broken people. Well, yeah. And well, don't know Ray's how, the next con, yeah. right? You you kind of get yeah, that, and like she doesn't communicate maybe because like she's been under Dan Hedaya's thumb for so long. Yeah, and there's just all this backstory that you go in that you put in your mind that doesn't it's not explicit but is kind of there there is a the, i think this is like the the ultimate bad to worse movie for me in a lot of ways and uh, there's this great it's a, it's framed in the movie as a joke it's when marty goes to see lauren the detective in his beat up old vw bug and they're sitting there and they're just talking about this is prior to him hiring him to kill him and uh the detective tells him this joke and it's he says you know you know a friend of mine a while back broke his hand and put and it was put in a cast very next day he falls protects his bad hand and breaks his good one so he breaks it too you know so now he's got two busted flippers so i say to him creighton i says i hope your wife really loves you because for the next five weeks you can't even wipe your own goddamn ass so um <laughs> like it's it, it's kind of summarizes what happens in this and a lot of other coen brother movies is like if the guy just let himself re-break his bad hand he wouldn't be have two broken flippers i guess and that that's like the whole right. theme of the movie is in this joke which is you know if in a tarantino movie that would just be the royale with cheese conversation that has no no application to the rest of the movie at all it's just in there for fun right. like but the all the dialogue in coen brothers movies like has a much deeper meaning that speaks to whatever the theme they're doing is usually right it all ties back to the center right and that's something like i love about the way they um the way they do do this so right now ray and abby don't trust each other um and uh mehmet's out there trying to find his fucking lighter and he realizes the picture has been switched and he doesn't have the picture so he's tossing the uh bar office and everything um it, it you know abby goes there and she thinks ray did it it's this whole like comedy of errors but not comedy tragedy and uh, it kind of culminates with Ray going to Abby's place, like um, seeing, I guess he can see that there's a man with a gun. He doesn't know who it is. They don't know who M.M. Walsh is at this point. They have no idea. Abby just wants to talk to him about well, what. Go ahead. I was just saying, Ray found the doctored picture. Like he oh, found. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. In, in the, the safe. The way it had been doctored, so he put it together that it wasn't her. So he's like, I, I'm going to go apologize to her, but there's this guy with a gun, and she's coming in there to be like, "What the fuck did you do? Why did you think I did this?" And it all culminates with um, Mehmet shooting and she, Ray, and she, and she doesn't know that Marty's dead at this point, does she? I don't think. She, I think she. Th think something happened yeah. she sort of believes ray like something clearly happened yeah she doesn't quite understand what is because nobody's talking um, well because he tells her he was like when i he was alive when i buried him yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she knows like something happened to marty well the and there's the dream yeah. that happens right prior to this where you think and for the way the coen brothers play this you you think this could really be marty just dug his way out of the hole and he's yeah. come back to yeah. her but you, if you look in that scene, all, there's all this shattered glass on the floor, mm -hmm. which is like kind of like a weird psychic foreshadowing. It's another horror element in this movie that you don't see in a lot of yeah, horror thrillers. Uh, he, the M Mehmet, I keep yeah. saying Mehmet and it sounds silly now. Yeah. Well, he <laughs> snipes basically John from afar and yeah. the window shatters yeah. and there's glass everywhere. And it hasn't happened yet. Yeah. So in her dream, the room looks like it does after he's killed yeah. Ray, but Marty's sitting there. He comes out of the oh, shadows. Yeah, <laughs> and when he stands up, this is a great, another great kind of horror moment when Marty delivers his line to her and then he just pukes blood all over and then she wakes up. That Marty, man, the boy can't stop vomiting. No, he's all about vomit. Wow. 
He's a puker. It was sort of. It's funny because you mentioned that um, that sort of Day of the Dead scene where you expected that to happen <laughs> earlier in the show, but this, that reminded me of that in her dream when he did that. It just like visually kind of had a similar like red bloody plopping yeah uh, plopping that reminded me of that scene well you also get they set up that there's there's some issue with marty's health to begin with he's always drinking milk and always has alka seltzer on his desk mm -hmm. so yeah. you kind of like you're like oh this guy's stomach is ruined from some kind of stress or something um he's just kind of a screwed up person to begin with so at, at this right. point um mehmet knows he's only killed ray he knows she's still in the apartment, so he comes to the apartment to to get her ass, and she's um, desperately trying to hide from him in the bathroom. And then this great scene where she's kind of snuck out the window into the next room over, and he's like trying to reach out for her, and she stabs oh. his hand. He's this got whole, his big mittens. This yeah. whole sequence was so brutal. It was yeah. really brutal. Um, and he's struggling, you know, with his hand being stabbed and, and, and pinned to this windowsill. And he's shooting through the wall. And he's shooting through the wall at her. And then eventually he just starts punching through the wall so he can get his hand free. This, yeah, it was just a really This tense. is the scene that Kelly was talking about earlier yeah. when he, he, you yeah. said that this is very much like a Sam Raimi style scene. Especially yeah. this, like... This, is one, this yeah. is one of them. The other one was... When they when they first pull up to Ray's with the where when Ray Fuller first pulls up, I think with the body in the trunk, yeah, and it's like in a or they they first go to his house and it's like that zoom up, yeah, the like fast in, tracking in the beginning shot. of Evil Dead, yeah. yeah. It, anyways, uh, but but yes, this was the other one that was like so straight up Evil Dead, like yeah, the hand squirming, and it's kind of clearly like a puppet hand, but like it's still really gross. Yeah, the um, and you keep expecting that he's just gonna obliterate his hand and pull it out. Mm -hmm. But if you yeah. think back to the story again, you go back to the joke about his buddy who broke his hand, and instead of just letting himself destroy his, you know, his already injured hand, he starts banging away on the wall and pushes his face through the glass and starts cutting his face up like he's making again. He's yeah. it's like which a little is, microcosm of making it worse. A, this is kind of a badass move it really was. To, to punch through a wall to get a knife out so you can free yourself <laughs> yeah that was yeah. it's very jason-ish yeah this well this whole sequence you could it would have easily been you could just paste this into halloween or or like you were saying friday the 13th it, it's like that yeah. stalker slasher unstoppable force moment like well, shining it's, it's the same thing with no country for old men yeah um yeah uh, what's his act, that javier bardem javier bardem's character like anton sugar and yeah we're gonna got we after that we got to get to the the connections between well, these two movies yeah, it's go very ahead. similar because these um boogeyman kind of you look at them and say wait they're, they're ridiculous characters they're mm -hmm. not going to be ter horrific he's just a big sweaty dude yeah and like anton sugar has that crazy haircut yeah so does Ray. Ray has the same haircut yeah. in this movie. Um, Freddie, Freddie, I was going to bring that up. Like, wondering <laughs> if that was like, but you know, they love shit like that. And yeah. I was like, I wonder if they, that was why they styled him that way. Like, yeah, there's maybe. so many obvious callbacks to this movie in, in No Country for Old Men. Is so many. Weird. Like John Getz, who plays Ray, like. I'm like, I know that guy. Who is that guy? He is the smarmy asshole from all your favorite 80s movies. Like, don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. Men at work. Christmas like, vacation? Yeah. Like, is he. Christmas no. Vacation? He's not. Is no. He, no, I don't uh, think so. I can check for you. If you um, no, I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know, Margo. He was, no, he was in the, a different the guy. fly yeah. remake with Jeff Goldblum. Remember? Yeah. Like, he is such a smarmy asshole in other movies. But in this, he's like. He just looks like an average Joe guy. He's just an average guy. Just a regular guy. Um, so yeah, unstoppable force, but our, our bitch Abby takes care of business and shoots him. Yeah. Um, and, she, before and if, she, and like, yeah, if you paid attention, you knew that there was one bullet left. Yeah. Right. Yeah. From earlier, yeah. which could have easily been shot in a ray had, uh, you know, as he, as he cycled through that cylinder, if he had let, if he had let him hold on to that gun for one more pull of the trigger earlier when he was burying Marty. That was the, the no, bullet. No, I think he's refilled it at this point because they never, he shot they sh in the wall like six times or five he, times. That wasn't the gun that yeah, he that shot the, the gun. Oh, that was a different gun. It was gun. a different gun. You're right. Yeah, because he had yeah, like, he had like a nine millimeter, okay. like, yeah. 
And that was just a old, that's a that's a little lady gun. That the lady have, gun. Yeah. That would have shot through the wall. The pearl handle gun, like there's Hello? those three bullets. One, two, three. Hello. Yeah. Hello. 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 Kelly, can you not hear us? Hello. Hello. Kelly. Hi. Can, can you hear us? Can you hear I get now I can. Okay. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> what happened? What happened? Hi. Comedy of errors. Well you you went away. No. We were here the whole time. We were, we were dead the whole time. Yeah. Our hand was stuck in the wall. Ah! So she shoots him, he laughs at her, but he dies and she leaves. I love that he's just laying under the sink. Mm-hmm. And uh she says she this whole time it's important to mention too that Abby thinks this is Marty. Yeah. She, she never sees him. Yeah, she doesn't know who this really is. Right. She thinks Marty has come back and was wreaking all this havoc and she yells, I'm not afraid of you anymore, Marty. Yeah. Yeah, because it's he called Lauren has called her earlier. This this helps set up the comedy of errors. Because Ray walks in, what's his nuts has called her to make sure where she is. And then uh, she thinks it's Marty. He thinks it's some dude that she's hooking up with. And it like exacerbates things. And so she thinks, like you said, this now she still thinks this is Marty because she thinks he called her earlier. So really, like at the end of the day, the lesson you need to take away from this movie is clear and concise communication <laughs> well there's when you do not assume when you go back and rewatch it the opening uh narration is, is the detective character and this is really great because when you if you go back and rewatch it on a rewatch you'll feel like maybe he's t- saying this narration from beyond the grave it's uh yeah. it's, he says the world is full of complainers and the fact is Nothing comes with a guarantee. Now, I don't care if you're the Pope of Rome, president of the United States, or man of the year. That's mm-hmm. the engraving on his yeah. his lighter from the Elks Club. Uh, he says something can all go wrong. Now, go ahead, you know, complain, tell your problems to your neighbor, ask for help, and watch them fly. Now, in Russia, they got it mapped out so that everyone pulls for everyone else. That's the theory, anyway. But I want, uh, but I, what I know about is Texas, and down here, you're on your own. And he mentions Russian Russia another time where he talks yeah. about making like 50 cents a day or whatever. Well, yeah. you know what I want to say to Mr. Uh, Lauren Elks man of the year. I don't subscribe to your way of thinking. You are not on your own. Yeah. You have us. <laughs> you have us. It's too late for you. Lauren. But as long as you communicate, yeah, you have to communicate your needs Yeah, and what is happening. So yeah, it was a really well-made, um, interesting movie, yeah. but you also have entertained there, again, not to entertain it. This dialogue is just, I know you think it's precious. It's so damn good though, because the communication point is also brought up when he first goes to, uh, to tell Marty. I get it. It's so brilliantly crafted and, and brilliantly put together crafted. and I'm wrong. You I loved wrong. all of the dialogue. Are you ready? No, you got to hear this. Though. Oh Lord. It'll make you appreciate how fucking he's tightly gonna, written. He's going to explain this to you. Let me man explain. Oh, why you don't get Let it. Me, you want to sit he's, down. He's film splitting. Let me hand you your purse. No film fans. Uh, splitting. No, the, it's just this. I'm passionate about this movie. Yes, uh, yes, yes. The, the exchange when he first brings the photos to Marty and he says, Mar- Marty says to him, you know, in ancient Greece, they would kill, kill the, the messenger. messenger. Yeah. Like that's, that's part in, in, uh, that's part of the theme is you can't trust people with information. You can't be right. the you can't be the bearer of bad news, like that's the mentality is yes. that you if to be the bearer of bad news is too much of a risk, right? And like that's so that's I think that is also like the tight lipped nature of the characters in the movie. Like I, these guys, I don't know what sort of mushrooms they were taken, <laughs> what level of genius they got to, but I don't know. It, it's just like fucking, ugh, it's good. It's really really it good. Is, it's, it's really good. It's beautiful. Like. Uh, really, really interestingly and beautifully shot. And like, like I said, so, so many things, I feel like they were really going back um, to in, in old, con- no country for old men. Old like even that buffet. street, <laughs> old country <laughs> buffet for Ooh. no men. Old country. Ah! I, I called it the old country for no men or something. Yeah. Like that. And he just did it um, too. That street that, well, I, I did it jokingly. Uh, well, I oh, almost did, did it for real, and then I caught myself, and then I did it jokingly. Anyway, okay. the street that Ray lives on looks almost exactly like the street that Anton Sugar ends up walking down after getting shot. Like it, there, there's places where it looks almost like identical, or you know, scenes that are like r- really, really similar. And uh, again, Ray, how how deep does it go? 
Is it Ray's hair? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. It's it's Texas. Texas was really like the fifth character, you guys, of the movie. Yeah. Of the Cohen verse. Carrie's Cosmos. It's funny funny you bring that up because this like, I feel I feel this is like an American Gothic or a Southern Gothic movie. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like that's one of my favorite types of my favorite genres. But I I like that genre when it's set in bayous and yeah. there has to be moss on the trees. I need swamps. <laughs> but you still got that. Well, this, oh, is, this like, is more of a oppressive dusty, feeling. Uh... Yeah, I don't like dusty gothic. I like swampy gothic. And yeah. in, in case anybody's wondering, you can mark me down for that one. Clear and concise communication. I'm letting you know. Thank you. You're welcome. It's like men are from Mars and women are from Venus. And Amy is from swampy Gothic land. <laughs> anyway, what? I like a moisture uh, area. <laughs> <laughs> you like it moist. I like it moist. moist. I uh, like it both for different reasons. Sure. Sure. Uh, well, I, just, I just like the feeling of like American Gothic movies, the yeah. oppressive nature of it. This is, they're heavy directors for the most part. Like yeah, I need like Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah, I need like some recovery time after seeing like a prototypical <laughs> oh, Brothers heavy. movie. Yeah, <laughs> a little bloated. Yeah. <laughs> there are heavy directors out there. Peter like, Jackson. I really Scott. like like No Country for Old Men, but I don't think I can watch it again. Just oh because no, it was a it's a tough movie. To, it was a lot, yeah. but I can watch um, Fargo over and over again because there's a more of a heart to that movie than this one or. Like no country for old men, right? So, I I need to go back and give no country another. Me too. Uh, I have I have the same experience as you, man. Well, maybe if you guys do that, you can record a little podcast together about it. True. Put it well, out on the mayhap Patreon. We can. Mayhap. Yeah. Read it. Oh, they're coming to get you, Kelly. The popo. Um. Mm-hmm. Okay. Great. So that was Blood Simple. What a yeah. very interesting, very film. Film uh, scholar conversation. It's just filmy. It's super it's filmy. filmy. It's like a greasy film. It's a greasy film over your life. That was a success, you guys. A that success. was a, coro- a coronavirus week success. Yeah. yeah. We do the best we can here. Hashtag wash your hands. Wash yo. Um, hands. So, yes, next week we will discuss Kill List. Thanks to Mark and his pick. So. Yeah. I, and then uh, Kelly will review um, CM Punk being a bad dad. <laughs> As a person. CM Punk is bad dad. What's the name? R- was it Rashiki? Dad, dad. I think Rashiki is, re- is who I was thinking of. What's the name of the movie? Um, bad, bad dad. Girl on the Third Floor. Oh, will you text me that? AKA Bad Dad. He's bad. Yeah, yeah. Bad dad. Bad dad. Oh, make, is it because he's mad or he's is it because he's sad? He's a real mad dad. You know, he's bad. He's a recent grad. <laughs> <laughs> His garbage bags are glad. <laughs> he's always wearing plaid. <laughs> His favorite actor is Josh Gad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, patrons are Beelzebubs. Hey, we love you guys. Our um, bumpsters. You you give you give our live direction. You boost our immune system with your joy. Um, Again, patreon.com slash NOTLP to support the show. The Beelzebubs are our producers, basically. We always give them a shout out. Shout them out. Yeah. um, What's wrong? That was just a weird moment. Anyways, not you. (laughs) My my screen like randomly reloaded all on its own. Uh, So Ernie Perez. I thought Amy was going to jump over the turnstile at you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what <Bitch>. wrong? <laughs> Say it, Ernie. Uh, Ernie Perez. Wash your hands. Wash your Be hands. well, Elise. Girl, you're. Can you hear you. us? You're doing great, Be Elise. Well. You, you're doing exactly what you need to do. She's downstairs. Yeah. Amanda. Stay home. Yep. Jeremy. Be well. Jeremy and Cassie. We know that they're doing their part. Mm-hmm. They're stay staying healthy. home. Yep. We Mark, missed, yeah. We're missing you next weekend, but thank you, yeah. and I uh, love you guys. Mark Watts. Mark, thank you for your pick. Looking forward to Be it. Well. Be yeah. well. Such a good pick, by the way. Uh, Blake Heath. Sir, wash your hands. 
Amy, hey, well, you, you don't have to tell every person on one your hands. Ass. Only your one, ass. one, one your ass. Only one in one hundred people have it. So right, isn't that what you do? Share you like your toilet paper. Just don't lick. Um, just don't lick right there. Uh, Where what else you got, hon? Under my balls. Uh, Bill Farner. Bill, you're in New York. Why haven't they closed the schools yet? I'm, I'd be Bill terrified be well. to ride the subway right now. Yeah. Uh, Tree and Alex. <sighs> you guys. Hi, guys. Be stay well. Stay inside. Iona. Well, Australia. You guys got it, too. It's, it's crazy. crazy. Girl, and then, be well. Just a quick aside, like, that's that whole, this people trying to feed the whole seasonal thing is like, it's a whole nother season in Australia. Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't understand the science behind them saying, okay, Uh, Jeff Lancaster. Hey, be well. Yeah, just be (laughs) well. Be well. Use your cough pocket. Brandon and Emily. They're no longer coming into town either, which is sad. I slurred. Guys, be well. Brandon and Emily. Uh, Is there something wrong with wishing people be well? It's just you keep saying, guys, be well. (laughs) Wash your hands and be well. Can you go to the be well and give me some bees? (laughs) May the false be with you. (laughs) I'm going to keep saying it. Okay. Bill Chandler. What up, Ghostface Blue? Who's Bill be well. He's he's my uh, my Discord guru, so as we ramp up uh, being on Discord, Bill's our go-to guy. Uh, And Todd DePompa. Todd. Todd DePompa. Did I take that away from you, Amy? No, it's fine. I want to tell Todd to pump the hand sanitizer and the soap ah, under your hands. They're all out of it. Oh, well, and be well and stay safe. Yeah. I heard you can make your own hand sanitizer with undiluted gasoline. Who told you that? Uh, I think it was Johnny Knoxville. No, I think it was Alex Jones. Or Alex Jones. Mm-hmm. And if I drink silver. Hey, he's got the cure. Oh, yeah. definitely silver. Get your get your essential <laughs> oils out and rub your children down. Oh, don't forget the crystals, too. Just start washing your hands. Shove uh, a crystal up your uh, butthole and you'll be fine. How's Goop doing? Is she okay? Who knows? <laughs> what? Oh, my God. Just imagine the crow we would have to eat if Gwyneth Paltrow <laughs> She's creates the fucking vaccine <laughs> for COVID-19. I would jump off a cliff. <laughs> I was like, not my world. This is not the world I want to live yeah, in. Yeah. Uh, but if she can, that's fine. What? Like, Everybody be well, listeners. I yes. want to tell everyone, stay safe, be well. Except for Donald Trump. You can go fuck yourself. Well, he's not a listener. I don't care yeah. about him. Yeah. <laughs> what if he is? So, uh, you know, better. I second you, Kelly. I think, like, your health is the most important thing. Yours specifically. Yeah. Just you. Keep it, thank you. I agree. Keep it safe, everybody. And keep just, Kelly like, safe, guys. <laughs> keep, keep it high and tight and just stay indoors. <laughs> keep it secret. Keep it safe. Keep it safe. Exactly. Um, All right. We love you. Yeah. Remember, communicate. Right, bye. Yes. yes, communicate. Bye. If you have the Everything virus. but the virus. <laughs> If he should go to bed When his old buddy Leatherface put on